Welcome into the Mountain Studios for Sonic Post Game Live. Joining us once again, Coach Marty Fletcher to break down everything. Now, New Mexico was the team that came up with a huge road win. San Diego State has not found the winning ways since losing Kyle Spain. Let's break this one down. J.R. Gittin is playing some great ball right now, but, Coach, some other players are stepping up, too. Well, it was great three-point shooting in the first half, going 8 for 11. Guys kind of contributing, a team effort. Uh, here you have... Ferris, though, he gave him some good play inside. There's the spin move, the kiss off the glass. Ferris had uh, one of the most improved players in the conference. There you have the nice penetration and the kiss. Uh, Doris, uh, Doris Gary had a big second half with 12 points. There you have the finish. Excellent job by Gary from not Gary, Indiana, but Alcard, Indiana. And, and of course, Topper, you, you, you never forget about Topper. He can knock down the threes. But it was a great team effort for New Mexico. A lot of guys contributing in a lot of different ways. Marius mentioned the Aztecs uh, lost Kyle Spain for this game and for the rest of the season. How much did you notice that they missed him tonight? Well, you saw New Mexico go to... Uh, uh, exclusively the zone in the second half. It, it did hurt San Diego State. They couldn't get it to, uh, to knock it down from outside. And when you're not shooting the ball well, that zone tightens up. It tightens up. It tightens up. And they, they, they cut down the penetrating lanes, which San Diego State does such a great job. So absolutely shooting the ball from uh, downtown will hurt you uh, versus a zone and San Diego State was not able to knock him down. I gotta ask you about J.R. Giddens. Is he playing to the best of his potential right now? Because all around he's doing it all. He's blocking shots. He's rebounding. He's scoring. He's doing everything. Oh, he's having, he's having a great run right now. He was player of the week where he, he scored Ready for this? 36 in his last game. So he comes back off of that performance. He makes steals. He had assist. He had 21 points. He was three for three from from uh, the Trey land. And then he gets 11 rebounds. So double-double. J.R. Giddens is playing at a MVP type level. He, he had three great games in a row. This is a terrific win led by J.R. Giddens. Speaking of doing it all, we have to take a, a close look at Low Wade because he did it all nearly perfect in the first half of play. And big showers from each team and J.R. Giddens and Lorenzo Wade. Coach. Wait, there's the rebounding. What a great job by Giddens. I mentioned he was three for three from Trayville. Seven eight for eight field goals. Wade had a great shooting percentage as well, six for ten. But J.R. Giddens, that is a terrific stat line when you go seven for eight, six for uh, six for seven, and you also go three for three from Trayville. This guy is playing at a All-American type level. New Mexico is a team to be reckoned with. They dropped a hundo on Wyoming last week, and tonight they get the big road victory over San Diego State. With more on the win, we send you back out to Montezuma Mesa, where Dave Bullwinkle is standing by with New Mexico coach Steve Alford. Steve, extended use of the zone tonight, kind of changed the game. Talk to me about you being a zone guy. <laughs> well, it was really just by chance. Um, we, they're really drip, driving us hard, so we just went to our zone defense just to try to slow them a little bit and try to slow Wade down because I thought we really focused on him in the first half and he still gets 15. So it was just a minor adjustment. Sometimes that stuff works, sometimes it doesn't, and our guys really did a good job of getting the shooters. Going to the zone, do you expect a call from Coach Knight later this evening? Uh, prob probably, but uh, he's always told me, try those things to see if they can figure it out. And fortunately tonight, I don't know if they ever figured it out. Jonathan Wills, his length helps you in the zone. Talk about his length. Well, Jonathan's been tremendous all year. This is a freshman that's getting better and better because every day in practice he guards J.R. Giddens. And you saw J.R. again, just another fabulous game. But uh, Jonathan does give us length there, and I think Dereese and Jamal really played ahead of game as well. You mentioned Jamal. You talked about the freshman, Wills. What about the senior and the leadership you're getting from Jamal Smith? Well, Jamal's really been big here of late, and we're going to need that here down the stretch. This was a pivotal road win for us. Gets us plus one, as we like to say, uh, because we've got two road wins and only one home loss. So now we got a big one on Saturday. Congratulations. Good luck Thank the rest of the way, Steve. Thank you. Big. He talked about the play of Jonathan Wills, and it has to help his game when you're guarding J.R. Giddens every day in practice. Well, you're getting an education, let's put it that way, <laughs> and, it's, and, and it's paying dividends because he has been uh, inserted into the starting lineup last couple basketball games. He's done a terrific job. You heard your coach talk about Jamal Smith uh, coming off the bench with 13 points. They're getting great team performance and and the guy that's carrying them we know about J.R. Giddens is playing at a lights out level when you talk about six for seven from the floor three from three 
from Trayville, and of course, 11 big rebounds. So, J.R. Giddens and his mates are doing a terrific job. That's three big wins in a row. Well, the Lobos had three players scoring double digits, and for that, they get the win. So now, once again, Dave Bullwinkle is ready with some final words from one of the stars of this New Mexico team, and J.R. Giddens. JR, your 23rd birthday today. Any better present than a W here on the road? I don't think it's a better present, man. It feels good to get a big road win. We needed this one. Well, speaking of road wins, what are some of the things that you as a player have to do, especially with your experience as a fifth-year senior, to help the younger players recognize what you need to do to win away from home? Just uh, keep talking. We, we do a good job of communicating all together as a team and just come out and give energy and just try to, you know, step up and be clutch in uh, the key moments of the game and just, you know, Help my teammates along when we're struggling. A lot of tonight's game, you went mono versus mono versus Lorenzo Wade. Do you kind of relish that opportunity? Uh, yeah, I do, because he's a great player, and I know him. He's a great person as well. So it's always a good matchup, but it's it's more, you know, New Mexico versus San Diego. Congratulations, Jared. Good luck the rest of the way. All right, thank you. Go Lobo. <laughs> Coach, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats from this one. And you know what? When you shoot that well from the field, you're going to win, aren't you? Well, 52% from the floor, but 55%. From the three line, uh, they made uh, good, enough free throws, rebounds, but turnovers, 20 too much for San Diego State. If you're not going to shoot a high percentage, you've got to at least get a shot up. They came away with too many empty possessions. But New Mexico really was in total control most of the game. The shooting in the first half, the zone defense was effective in the second half. So New Mexico goes away with a terrific win. J.R. Giddens, once again, 21 points, 11 rebounds. That's a great, nice work. Time for a quick break, and when we get... Don't look now, but the Lobos are killing folks on the hardwood. Although tonight's victory was by a margin of only 10, their last two games, their margin of victory has been by 40 and 45 points. I don't think I would want a piece of the Lobos right now. With more on the game, we go back out to our game announcers, James Bates and Dave Bullwinkle in San Diego. All right, well, thanks a lot. How about Steve Alford's New Mexico Lobos, a 10-point win on the road at Cox Arena, a very tough place to come in and steal a win. A little payback, if you will, though. How about this? In the last two seasons, these Lobos were only 3-19 and 19 on the road. Already 5-5 five and five this year and coming off a huge win and the serve back on their side. And a big factor, of course, being J.R. Giddens, who had another great game. It only should expect that, seeing as the co-player of the week in the Mountain West Conference. He did it every single which way. There you got to the up and the under. He gets the flush on the dump, and he breaks the ankle of the defender, Billy White, to get into the paint and make another jump shot. Every way you could do it, JR did it tonight, but you know what? We're getting used to that. You know, he turned 23 tonight, and he just finishes off a, a career high, 36 on Saturday, has another double-double here tonight. I could invite all my my son's friends over to the house and now on my birthday, and I wouldn't have points like that. Putting up the big points. Next up, TCU going to the pit, and it doesn't get any easier for Steve Fisher's squad. This was a home game. They were supposed to win this one. They were supposed to win against TCU. Now they've got a really rough schedule. Well, you made a mention of it earlier. They had won. The Aztecs had won in the pit. This just turns the whole thing around and makes the good win at the pit be a push. And on the other side of the coin, New Mexico now, because they get both UNLV and BYU, the heavyweights in the conference, the second round in league, they get them in Albuquerque. So they are in a really good position to make a push, not just to get to the top of the first division, but to get at the top of the heap and have a chance to win the whole thing round robin wise. Wow, the heavyweights going into the pit. That'll be a fun one. I'd love to see those. We'll have them for you, of course. All the action in the Mountain West Conference up through the tournament on the mountain, but we're not talking fighting. We're talking love, and you guys all have a happy Valentine's Day tomorrow, okay? You do that for us. Good night. Come on, blow them a kiss, coach. It's Valentine's Day. Blow them a kiss. Hurry before. There you go. Good night, guys.